Good evening. I'd like to call uh, the meeting for Springfield Board of Education, April 18th, 2023, to order. Mr. Adams? Ms. Terry? Here. Mr. Ray? Here. Mr. Petrie? Here. Mrs. Farola? Here. Mr. Hofer? Here. Thank you. If we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this time, we'd like to uh, recognize the Springfield High School Junior High Students of the Month. Ms. Good evening. Okay, We're going to start with our junior high recipient for the month of March. Joelle, will you um, join me up here at the podium? This is what Joelle's nomination says. I have been so impressed by this student. Joelle is our eighth period office aide. This alone shows that she's a hard worker because she has to have academic privilege to be an aide for anyone. That means all grades must be a C plus or higher, and Joelle is an AB student, but she's much more than an academic privilege student. When working in the office, she routinely helps with the Spartan pantry. Joelle has also maintains the Spartan standard bulletin board for me making sure to display the most recent recipients. Joelle is dependable and mature beyond her eighth grade standing. She has a bright future at Springfield and beyond, and it has been my privilege to get to know her this year. And I wrote that, I nominated her. <laughs> <laughs> so you get a copy of what's posted in the school and a certificate. Can I give you a hug? Sure. Congratulations. Uh, Melissa McDaniel, will you come on up? Melissa is our high school recipient. And this is what um, Mrs. Gray has to say about her. Melissa is a standout ninth grader. She is hardworking, positive, and a role model to her peers. She always has a smile on her face, and she comes to class ready to learn. She exemplifies the Spartan standard on a daily basis. So, Melissa, I have what's posted in the school for you as well, as long as the certificate. So, congratulations. So, up next, we're very lucky to have the Springfield High cheerleading squad here. They had made it down the state. Um, Coach Bethany, I'm going to leave it up to you now. Hello. Behind me is some of our high school uh, cheerleading team members. I'm going to go ahead and list them or show you guys. So you just give a little wave when I say your name. So I have Ellen Gray, Sakaya Simpson, Ashley Pickett, Maddie Price, Ella Ingham, Madison Burt, Madison Hawksworth, Avery Skaggs, Sadie Jones, and Charlotte Starner. And they are a part of our state team that went, they went to states at um, Columbus this year and we've been very uh, fortunate that we have had a group, great group of girls and they've worked very hard this season. They went, took two routines down to Columbus and we were able to place fourth with our game day competition and then we also had a traditional routine that we took and they placed seventh with that um, team as well. So awesome competition down in the states and we're excited to get back to work and we're actually having tryouts this week so we're um, in the midst of that, getting ready to prepare for next season, so hopefully. So quick question, how, yeah. how, do you, how does Chile make it down the States? So you have to go to a regional competition that they hold in January or February. A, they have a couple of different ones in the state, and so if you qualify at regionals, then you get the chance to go down to the That's States. awesome. Yeah. And uh, to also note, uh, Coach Bethany was nominated as uh, Chile Coach of the Year for that season. <laughs> And we are very proud of you guys and love to watch your, your, your you know, it's, it's amazing. And I hope the tryouts, you guys get people just as excited as you are. So, does anybody have any questions for our wonderful team here? No, no questions, yeah. but congratulations. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you guys. 
I, I, and I do have, thank you girls, I'm going to get back to work because I know Coach Bethany likes to work you guys. Um, I do have one more recognition. Um, there's a, uh, the Rotary has something called a four-way speech. And um, it starts off first as a school competition and then it's, a, then it's a district competition and then it's the big regional, or did I say that backwards? Regional competition, which, uh, which goes all the way from Springfield all the way up to Lake Erie, um, uh, Mentor, um, Huron, all those areas up there. And every year, somebody else gets to host this amazing competition. But this year, Springfield High School is going to be hosting it. So we will be having um, students from all over Northeast Ohio coming to our school on Saturday. We were lucky enough that Sam Jones, if you want to stand and wave, he is uh, one of our contestants who will be participating in the four-way speech on Saturday. And his speech, I'll tell you, um, we had seven people compete for it. Um, two are making it down to the four-way speech. Sam's speech was heartwarming and, and, and to the heart. And it, it, I, think, I think you wrote it from the heart, if, if I'm not. And it was awesome. So I cannot wait till Saturday to hear. He was going to do it. He needs a little bit more practice. So uh, we're going to get ready for Saturday. And I cannot wait to hear it on Saturday and see how you do with it. So congratulations. Thank you. Do you have anything else? No, that's good right now. OK. Um, at this time, we'll do board members informal. I'm going to start with. <laughs> if you're OK with that. Yeah, I have a few things. Um, first, Joelle Carter, even though she already left, um, I was lucky enough to actually coach her in volleyball and basketball, and Mrs. Warner hit it perfectly, dependable. She doesn't miss practice. She comes to practice always, and at that age, I mean, even the high school girls forget half the stuff they need, but she's always there. Um, she's always willing to help other people, too. It doesn't matter who it is, what age they are, she'll jump right in there, so I'm very... She's, when I saw her name, I was like, yeah, maybe <laughs> she deserves that. Um, the cheerleaders, I actually went, my daughter and I took two of her friends to one of the competitions, and we have never been to one. And I remember walking in, and Ella was like, are you ready? And I'm like, no. And it's a very <laughs> sensory overload thing if you've never been to one. Um, I say, go to one, and you will never come out the same. It's nonstop. <laughs> You're always going like this, waiting for them to, it's like watching ice skating. Um, but it's very good. Um, many of them were probably caught on your ring cameras over uh, Easter, because they did do a fundraiser that they hid um, Easter eggs in people's yards. So, um, seventh and eighth grade DC trip. I just want to give a shout out to Mrs. George. Um, she put a lot of work and heart into making that trip a success. Last year, my daughter and a couple of friends and a couple of moms actually went to D.C. during spring break. She was our tour guide. So I know they got the best experience ever. And somehow she got the best weather in the entire world. We were pretty jealous. But um, I also want to thank everybody that stepped up to help uh, chaperone. And then I, from what I've been told, the students were amazing yep. and represented the Spartans yes. in a very positive way. Um, and last, I think, and maybe. Um, this past Saturday, we had the reverse raffle. Shelly and I attended, and Dustin and his family. And it was amazing. Uh, I mean. I got some data if you want. Yeah. Um, 260 tickets were sold, which is, which the, is most the most ever in 15 years mm -hmm. of them doing this. There were actually 215 people in attendance. So at at the, um, which, I mean, if you could have seen the um, the excitement, I mean, it was just you talk about sensory overload. I mean, it was just a constant going. People were excited. Uh, they raised close to seventeen thousand dollars, wow. um, which is again truly amazing. And uh, all the feedback we've been getting on it has been very positive. So everything about it. And the, I'm gonna tell you what, I mean, the boosters that worked on it. I, I mean. You guys did an amazing job. I mean, everything was run so smoothly, and it was just, it, it was, I can't wait till next year. Yeah. It was so much fun. 
Um, Tara Gardner, Gina Gasper, and Julie Front are the three that give their heart. Mm -hmm. um, two of them actually missed their daughter's uh, track uh, meet that day mm -hmm. so that we could get it set up. Um, I was supposed to help, and they told me I need to be at the baseball field for my own kid, which means a lot to me. Um, Shelly was the first superintendent to actually attend a reverse raffle. So for me, that's huge, and I thank you for coming. Um, but I also want to, he left. I was going to call Mr. Skeggs out, who was, and his wife was like winning everything. So. <laughs> but it was, a, it was an amazing night. And it was. I, I'm sure Dustin had fun. He actually got to enjoy himself. He didn't have to work too much. We did put him to work for a little bit. But, just a little bit. Um, just a little bit. But it was a great night, so I just want to thank everybody that came, and especially the Gina, Tara, and Julie yes. for all their hard work. So. Okay. We need a germ. We can go now. Wow. Ran up so you throw my notes, so now i got to read my notes. So, yeah, thank you. Larry? I would just like to say how proud I am of the district and the positive direction that we're headed and this recognition of the st students each meeting has added a lot and I think it, it starts the meeting off with, in the right frame of mind so I, I appreciate that very much and it's great to see the great things that the kids are doing. Uh, also uh, shout out to the leadership here in the administration because uh, a real effort is being put into including the community and stakeholders in all big decisions that are being made. Uh, that's very much appreciated because it cuts down on a lot of chatter that we don't need to hear. <laughs> and we're also working for next year to uh, bring more students in from the other schools for uh, recognition. So it's, it's, I think it's going to domino into something where our meetings are going to be a little bit longer because the beginning parts are going to be longer, which that's okay. I'll uh, tail in on what Miranda has said. If you been, haven't been to a girls softball game yet, uh, you need to go. Uh, I watched one when they played, I believe, Streetsboro, and uh, the balls were being hit off the bat at a regular pace. Saw two home runs that game. It was awesome. Um, they're, on, they're well on their way to having a good season. Uh, if you get a chance, get out. Get out to see the boys game. I was in school last week for Free service, so and it's not easy going back to school when you're when you're when you're older. But it's 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 interesting. Uh, I will send you a legislative update. Uh, I was a little bit behind going back to school and, and getting that pre-service wrapped up. But look for my update, and then we'll share that again next month. I was going to say we're behind because we're a little older. This is longer. Yeah. Well, I the kids not, out here would I'm get. Trying boom, boom, boom. To, I'm trying not to give up on that yeah. to that just yet. And, and I'm going to piggyback on something that you said. Um, for our softball, it has been really successful, and uh, the Akron Beacon Journal says we are uh, the number seven team to watch. So yes. it's, and so that is really good, so I can't wait to see where we go with that. There's a big game tomorrow night at home against Field, 5 o'clock if you want to be there. Jed Park, correct? Jed Park. I really don't have anything to tell him on Larry what he said. This, my feelings also. I want to, Larry kind of captured everything, or most of what yeah. I was going to say, but we, you know, I think we all think alike, and we are appreciative of the positive efforts that are being made and the positive responses, and I am so proud of the students and the work that they are doing because regardless of Regardless of uh, sometimes they feel like oh, no one really cares about us or notices us, uh, they, st they still keep going and know that we'll see them eventually. <laughs> but uh, thank you. The kids have left, so I can't speak to them directly, but um, I'm very proud of what we've been able to accomplish or what has been, not we, what I'm seeing accomplished. Let's put it that way. Anyone, Shelly? No, I'm good. Okay. Um, we, uh, it is recommended now that the board approve the minutes of the regular meeting held on March 21st, 2023. So moved. Second. 
It has been moved. Aris. I know. We're ready for the approval. Buttons are going <laughs> slow. Yeah. Thank Ms. Terry. You. Yes. Mr. Petrie. Yes. Mrs. Frola. Yes. Mr. Hofer. Yes. Mr. Ray. Yes. And at this time, I'd ask that any citizens' comments on agenda items come forth, and your comments are welcomed at this time and are limited to five minutes, but uh, we would appreciate any feedback. Okay, seeing none, then we'll go to payments of the bills. It is recommended that the board approve payment of bills for the month of March pending audit. So moved. Second. It is moved in second that uh, we accept the payment of the bills. Now a vote. Mr. Hofer? Yes. Mrs. Frola? Yes. Mr. Ray? Yes. Mr. Terry? Yes. Mr. Petrie? Yes. <clears throat> All right, a second. Uh, it is recommended that the board approve a resolution for payment of bills per Ohio Revised Code Section 5705.21. So moved. All second. M moved and second, Mr. Adams. Mr. Ray. Yes. Mr. Petrie. Yes. Mrs. Frola. Yes. Mr. Hofer. Yes. Ms. Terry. Yes. Motion carried. Number 11, acceptance of financial reports. It is recommended that the board accept the financial reports from the treasurer for March 2023. And those exhibits have been provided to us. I'll make a motion to. I'll second. <coughs> Mr. Terry. Yes. Mr. Ray. Yes. Mr. Petrie. Yes. Mrs. Frola. Yes. Mr. Hofer. Yes. Moving on to personnel items, we'll start with accepting the resignation of substitute bus driver <coughs> Brenda Frame, effective March 21, 2023. 12.2 resignation, accept the resignation of bus driver Craig Fraley, effective April 23, 2023. Accept the resignation of teacher <coughs> Regina Carson, effective March 20, 2023. Next item, 12.4, is on tenure. Approve the tenure for certified employee Shiloh. Curas. 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 I'm sorry. That's fine. My name was Cipollone. I can't stand this pronunciation. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> Uh, who was initially licensed after January 21, 2011, and she holds a professional license, has appropriate credit hours, has at least three years' experience in the district, and has held an educator license for at least seven years, and is therefore recommended for a continuing contract effective for the 2023-24 school year pending proper documentation to meet requirements. 12.5, reduction in force for certified staff. Approve a reduction of the following certified positions due to financial reasons, effective 2023-24 school year. Literacy tutors, two full-time uh, positions. 12.6, reduction in force, classified positions. Approve a reduction of the following classified positions due to financial reasons effective the 2023-24 school year. That would be five everyday reader positions. Those are hard to read. Yes, they are. They're yes, hard they are. to read. Sorry. 12.7, limited contracts. Approve the following one year limited contracts effective for the 2023 school year for Brittany Glasgow, Elena Jackson, Catherine McFeeters, Julie Rapaski, Monica Ruzik, and Shelby Van Gooden. 
12.8, employment. Reemploy Matt, Matthew O'Brien from the reduction in force list per the negotiated agreement with SLAC as a special education teacher effective for the 2023-24 school year. 12.9, employment. Reassign classified employee Robin Mitchell as a four-hour standby bus monitor for the negotiated agreement pending proper licensure, effective March 20, 2023. 12.10, employment. Reassign classified employee Rachel Powell as a four-hour bus monitor on Route 46 for the negotiated agreement pending proper licensure, effective March 24, 2023. 12.11, summer school credit recovery. Approve Steve Schaefer as an online summer school credit recovery for grades nine through 12 instructor for summer 2023 at the approved rate of $28.25 from June 7, 2023 through July 23rd. This position is an online position with a maximum of two, day, uh, two hours per day for 25 days for a maximum total hour of 50 hours. 12.11. Non-Sport Supplemental Contracts. Approve the following non-sport supplemental contract for the 2023 school year per the negotiated agreement pending Harper licensure. Alyssa Bentz, Dramatics, 8%. Revised Supplemental Contracts. Approve the following athletic supplemental contracts for the 2023 school year per the negotiated agreement pending proper licensure. This would be A.J. Asola, varsity baseball assistant at 5%. He was previously approved as a volunteer coach. Todd Vargo, volunteer baseball coach, having been previous I'm sorry, previously approved as a varsity assistant baseball coach at 5%. Right. That was a lot. Did, you know, it was, it a, was lot. a lot, yeah. That Some of it was lot. hard. That was a lot. Um, so just a couple um, uh, points I just want to bring out. 12.4 about the tenure. So teachers are granted tenure if they meet these certain requirements, and that's per the, that's per the contract. Um, uh, Shiloh Huaz uh, was on a limited contract, and when she was talking with Mary for some reason, Mary recognized that she had the um, credentials and what she needed to become tenured or to get a continuing contract. So we worked with her, and so she's on the way to being a continuing contract. <coughs> uh, she was uh, very uh, appreciative of that, that we were able to get her that. Um, the 12.7, uh, um, the majority of our teachers having continuing contract. Being that we have riffed tremendously and we have such an older staff, the majority of our teachers do have continuing contracts. Excuse me. But, um, but these six employees, they, they still have limited. So they're, and when they meet the needs, then they will also move up to being continuing contracts. That's a very small number. That for a district that is an extremely small, small number. number. Yeah. That is an extremely small number. Um, usually, most districts it's 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 uh, pretty even. Um, as the older teachers go out, the newer teachers come in. But um, we have a very high continuing contract uh, just because of the levy not passing. Um, Matt O'Brien from twelve point eight. He is our last from the RIF list so that's good so uh, everybody that was on the RIF list from last year either had a job somewhere else or they were called back so we were excited to have Matt um, and I've met with him and he's really excited his he's always wanted to be here in Springfield so that is that is a uh, um, when somebody comes in to see me and say that, that that's that's exciting uh, summer school so credit recovery this is for the kids who have not passed a course during the year so they will take credit recovery through Apex, and Steve Schaefer will be uh, working with them to make sure that they get online. He watches to make sure that they're continuing on what they're doing. If they have any trouble, they contact him, and then he will uh, um, 
once they pass it, he'll pass it on to Mrs. Warner. Um, the non-supplemental with the list of events, um, and uh, um, Parker over here too, he's, uh, he's an amazing uh, asset to the high school, so you know, Parker, we don't give you enough recognition, so thank you very much, but at the beginning of the year, some students came up to me and said um, they wanted to do a play, and no teacher had signed up for that supplemental to do a play. So um, they're, they're struggling through it, but they're working through it, they're, they're, they're getting it. Um, I watch them on tape, I, I have a camera on my computer, so they don't know I'm watching, but I watch them <laughs> while, we're, while they're doing it. So uh, yeah, Big Brother is watching, so I do know. And uh, um, the, they've, they've really taken the bull by the horns. They, the kids are, the, it's, it's going to be a kid's play. And um, Alyssa Benz was on dramas last year, and she came back to do it. And I mean, she's a young adult, and it's, there's, there's their ups and downs and strugglings, but they've gotten, they're looking at the costumes, um, they're making the sets. Uh, we're doing uh, Alice in Wonderland down the rabbit hole, and I can't wait. It's gonna be in May, I'll get you the dates on that. Um, so she's been working on it since January. The only reason why she's on it right now is uh, my fault, I forgot to put it on the con, I forgot to put her on. Yeah. That was an oops on my part. Um, and I think, I mean, that was a lot. That was a lot, so. It was, that's but. That's good, that's good. In some ways it shows progress. It does show progress, in and in other ways it's sad. Okay, um, do we have a? Just, I'll second. Okay, it has been moved and second that the all the personnel items be voted on. Mr. I'd like to speak Adams, to an item on that. Pardon? I'd like to speak to an item on. Oh, that. sure. Thank you. Um, when we talked about this, when we had to, um, when we were talking of our financial recovery plan and the, the riff of the, the, the reading teachers, that is something that's very, that's something that's very dear to my heart. And I know we've had to cut a lot of folks in our district. I get that, I understand that, because of the, the levies that have went down. But I struggled in reading when I was a student. Some even to this day. So, even though we've approved it for the financial recovery, this is a very difficult vote as they have been in the past. And I just want you to know that I understand what, what we're doing to this district when, we, when we're retracting, when we get smaller. The opportunities are fading for some of our kids. I was in that position when I was in grade school in Akron. So. It hits home, it hits very close to home with me. Okay. And as someone who has a master's in reading instruction, it's, it's difficult for me because I know what this brings to have that kind of support. And I know what happens when the support isn't there. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the time that we can reinstate that because so it's so important. So when we ever get to the point Okay. Please. Absolutely. Restore reading to where Absolutely. we can. Fully and fund and it. you know and, and what, what's also disheartening is that the state is putting more and more mm -hmm. um, mandates on us for reading, and and, and again I'm going to give kudos to Mary and and, and her team. Um, our our reading teachers, our our classroom teachers, are picking up the slack of what they need to be doing and our reading our title team is also and, and, and they're working I mean the amount of hours that they put in for professional development with the dyslexia training with the science of reading we have programs called wit and wisdom uh, coming up that the training is we have letters training and they're, they're working hard and and it's unfortunate that we are taking away instead of building, especially for our youngest students. It's, so I, I feel both, it, it's, it's disheartening. Anyone else? Mr. Adams? 
Ms. Terry? Yes. Mr. Petrie? Yes. Mr. Farola? Sadly, yes. Mr. Ray? Yes. Mr. Hofer? Yes. Okay, motion passed. Number 13, a service contract with the Summit ESC. It is recommended that the board approve the service plan contract with the Summit Educational Service Center for the 2023-24 school year. Do you want to say anything about sure. that? Sure. So, so this is something that we do every year. So Summit County ESC offers us um, services that we don't have to purchase uh, ourselves. So some of the things that they do is we get our audiology uh, from them. We get our behavior specialist from them. Our psychologist um, we also get from, um, from uh, uh, the Summit County, as well as professional development for our teachers. So where our reading teachers are going out and getting the um, professional development they need from the things that I mentioned before, we are going to be using Summit County ESC for our math. So because we still have, you know, that's another thing. So we have, uh, um, uh, help me. Susan Huth uh, is going to be working with, and she's worked with our teachers this year, right. and she's going to continue working with our teachers next year in math. And she was working with our seventh and eighth grade teachers. Right. Um, so that's where we get that from Summit County ESC. They are a true partner in education for us. Okay. So moved. Okay. Second. Moved and second that the board uh, will vote on the uh, approval of the service contract. Mr. Hover? Yes. Mr. Petrie? Yes. Ms. Terry? Yes. Mr. Ray? Yes. Mrs. Frola? Yes. Number 14, service contract with Summit ESC. It is recommended that the board approve a service contract with the Summit Educational Service Center to provide employment services during the 2020. 324 school year at the cost of salary and benefits plus any other costs incurred in the employment of the individuals upon written request for the district's superintendent or designee. Let's get a motion first. Sure. I'll, I'm so moved. Second. Okay, so, so this is also through the ESC and what this is is for specific employees. Tyler is, is is somebody that we are blessed to have through Summit County ESC. He is, he is truly amazing. I mean, the fact that um, we have him and James. James, and we're one to one, everybody's got computers, everybody's got technology, and, um, and uh, uh, Tyler is, th thank you. Thank you. That's all I can say. Just thank you. And he as can I, fix everything. As I called him today and I said, I'm trying to get into something. I'm access to die. Get here now. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, he's, and he's right over there. And, and he's here tonight. And so we hire them through Summit County ESC. We also hire our educational interpreter and our EL tutor through them. And then that second part on that was if we have to hire anybody else through the ESC, we don't have to go through the board. I can just, that's giving me permission just to go ahead and do it. And for the benefit of those who might not, the EL tutor means? Uh, English as a second language. Okay. Sorry. Thank that's you. okay. Uh, you know, get that jargon. We get those. Yeah, uh, I, you know, I, I. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Mr. Adams. Mr. Petrie? Yes. Mrs. Farola? Yes. Mr. Hofer? Yes. Mr. Ray? Yes. Mr. Terry? Yes. Motion passed. Transportation to other schools. It is recommended that the board adopt the following resolution, be it resolved that it is deemed to be unreasonable, uneconomical, and or impractical under present conditions to provide transportation uh, on our buses to the following schools. Biomed Science Academy, that's the one in Kent, right? Uh, no, this one in Rootstown. Oh, in Rootstown. Yeah. Uh, Cornerstone Community, Canton Central Catholic, Lake Central Center Christian, Archbishop Hoban, Sacred Heart, St. Joseph, St. Vincent, St. Mary, St. Michael, Cuyahoga Valley Christian Academy, Redeemer Christian School, and Weaver of Canton. It is further resolved that the parents of students attending said schools 
may qualify for an annual payment per child as prescribed by the law of state average per pupil expended for transportation during the last past year is the amount prescribed. Parents may so qualify by waiving trans transportation, making application for a D contract, signing same, performing according to the terms thereof, and submitting an in invoice at the conclusion of the school year. That's it. <laughs> I'll make a motion. I will second. And that, of course, is uh, in lieu of transportation is what it's called. And the state allows schools to, if, it's, if it costs too much or there's not enough kids or whatever, to, to do the loan transportation. So that was very, very political jargon there, wasn't that? <laughs> well, it's, it's the official jargon. Yes, it is the it. official jargon. Mr. Adams? A uh, question. Yeah. Oh. Um, Sorry. We, ship, we transport to one school in the district and then we transport to one school out of the district? We transport to Super Learning Center, Summit, um, Summit County, um, yes, the, the Academy on Maslin Road. Scope. Scope. Um, That's in district, though. Th those are both in district, and then we also transport to St. Francis um, out of the district. So that's the only school out of the district versus all the other ones. So is there any thought to discontinuing that because that's the only school that we're shipping outside of district? We look at this every year and determine by the number of students going there and the, the time spent where our routes allow to, to do so. The, the state um, cost per student has more than doubled in the last year. So this is something we look at very closely as to what's economical and um, what, what's not and um, next year we expect or, or are looking at changes for that as well as to where what schools may benefit us to provide transportation for in, in lieu of the cost because the cost has increased so much it's getting to the point where it's you know, in some cases locally it's becoming more benef more beneficial for us to provide those services than to um, provide the payment in lieu of okay I'm just curious because that's the only one we, 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 we transport out of district. Mr. Adams. Ms. Terry. Yes. Mr. Ray. Yes. Mr. Hofer. Yes. Mrs. Farola. Yes. Mr. Petrie. Yes. All right, motion passed. The next item is resolution rejecting all proposals and bids on student transportation services. Resolved that the Board of Education, having determined to pursue a return to a district-owned and operated stu student transportation si system, rejects all proposals received for student transportation services, both existing services and turnkey services, and authorizes and directs the business manager to provide written notice of said rejection to all interested trans responders or bidders. First, we'll have a motion. I will make a motion. Second. Okay, Mrs. Do you want to speak <coughs> to Mr. that or Destin? Um, so back in February, we released two requests for proposals um, to contractors that service this area, one for existing services, um, is the hybrid model that we currently utilize for transport transportation services where the employees work for us, but the management company provides the fleet and management services um, there, as well as turnkey services where a contractor would provide all the services, including the um, employment of drivers, aides, and mechanics there. So um, we did so so that we could review all of our options that were on the table as our contract with first student expired June 30th. Um, in order to review those, we convened a committee of 15 members, which included representatives from each of our employee, employee unions, OPC 530, which represents uh, drivers, mechanics, and monitors, uh, OPC 179, which is the remaining support staff, SLAC, our teachers union, administration board members, and community members. We had volunteers from the community that volunteered to sit on this committee. We met three times over the last seven weeks and reviewed hundreds of pages of documents, 
um, reviewed financial projections, discussed the ins and outs of each um, scenario, um, and, and ultimately the, the committee as a whole recommended that the best option for the um, district would be to return to a in-house transportation department and brought that to the board for your review. Any other comment? I think this is great. We talked about it at great length last night and then I reached out to a couple people that sat on the committee, got my own, this is what they told me true. So um, I'm that person. Um, I think a couple people last night spoke up that it's been one of those things that has been out there that we build a bus garage, but we don't own our own buses. We don't do this, we don't do that. I'm not voting for this thing. Well, now we do. So we get control and it's all of well, not me, but it's ours. So I think it's a positive and hopefully we all work together to make it positive for everybody. Mr. Adams? Ms. Terry? Yes. Mr. Petrie? Yes. Mrs. Corolla? Yes. Mr. Ray? Yes. Motion passed. Motion passed. Uh, I don't know if it's appropriate for me to say this now, but I'm going to. I, I think <laughs> this process that the committee just went through, uh, and I got to be part, part of it just a small part because I was going to be out, not in the district uh, for the second, third meeting, but I, I was impressed with the input that was given, with the discussions that were had, and uh, I think this is another sign that good things are happening in the district because there is dialogue going on and there's feedback. And uh, the other thing that impressed me is some of the members of the committee the night I was there, they are part of the bus driving uh, program. And while some of the decisions that could have been, had a, not a negative impact, but not been as supportive of them as possible, what I heard them say was, you know, we've got to do what's best for the district. And if it means I don't have this, or if it means that we don't have that, then, you know, if that's the way it's, if that's best for the district, so, but I think this is a good decision. I, I think so too, and, and just, uh, we have some committee members that came, so thank you for, you know, coming tonight and hearing the, I mean, hard work. I mean, each meeting was over two hours. And um, kudos to Dustin, he put, I mean, he did a lot of work in getting this ready. So uh, um, it was, and you know, it, it was the best decision. And what we heard was for the district, but it was also the best decision for our kids. Yes. Well, and, and that is so And important. that's what they were saying. And that's, and that's you know, so Let's important. do what's best for the kids. You know, so I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled. I always believe I'm it. thrilled <laughs> to have it back in house. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your help. Um, Number 17, donations. It is recommended that the board accept the following donations. From Staples, 17.1. Staples donated approximately $350 of uh, supplies to Springfield Local School District. 17.2, uh, the OEA Educational Foundation uh, we are accepting a technology grant, which has been awarded to Andrea Novicki from the OEA Educational Foundation in the amount of $4,900 to purchase computers and virtual reality equipment. So moved. Second. So um, Staples, they just love us, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. Giving us stuff, which we will take wholeheartedly, happily. Um, it helps our families and our kids. Um, for the OEA Educational Foundation, so OEA, the um, Ohio Educator Association, gives a uh, grant that teachers can apply for, and Andrea and Vicki applied for it, and she was granted the 4,900. If you haven't had a chance to go to her classroom, please stop at the high school and go into her classroom. It is truly amazing. So, is. But check with her first to see. No, you check with her first, yeah, just don't pop in. Yeah. But no, it is. No. It's or, check, or check with Mrs. Warner and then she yeah. will, she, 
let's go through the proper channels. That was like really bad on my part. <laughs> go with Mrs. Warner first and then go through it. Well, they can't get in unless she buzzes. <laughs> this. this is true. You got to go past the gatekeeper, so. Okay. Mrs. Frola? Yes. Mr. Ray? Yes. Ms. Terry? Yes. Mr. Hofer? Yes. Mr. Petrie? Yes. Okay, motion passed. All right. Do you have it up here? Can you see it better? <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Uh, I do want to talk about, before I get into this, uh, Ms. Nowicki, uh, I think I do more grants for her in a year than just about anybody. It's mm -hmm. just, yeah, they keep coming. You know, and, uh, yeah. and I did visit her class and, and that virtual reality and, and what she does and her enthusiasm and dedication is, we're very fortunate to have her in this district. As it says up there, we are going to establish a finance committee for Springfield Local Schools. It's, uh, as everyone knows, uh, we have to address certain issues and we also have to educate. And more importantly, we have to listen to people's concerns. That's a big thing. So the initial meeting will be listening, gathering information, it cannot hurt this district to get as much information that is uh, verified by the state auditor. Uh, so it's, it's, it's accurate, it's uh, relevant, uh, because this, this district needs uh, to get as much factual information out to the voting public that we can. So the idea is, I put this out here with my email address, I, I would like anybody in the community, we do have people from the board, we can only have two board members at a time to attend this meeting, and I'm sure there'll be somebody from administration, but I would like your name and your email because we plan on uh, getting this uh, first meeting going in the next couple weeks. Uh, I can see it being an hour to two hours initially, uh, We'll establish a secretary uh, to take down uh, the concerns or the issues that people may not know about. And we'll also have a learning session. So I can see these being in two parts. Let's go over some of the issues the community has and let's go over some of the reports that I produce and the board sees all the time and, and, and go from there. It's gonna be a very fluid committee We've never, I, I don't know, before me, I don't think we've had a committee here in 20 years of time. It's time, so. Mr. So Adams. I encourage uh, union members, employees, uh, but I do want, uh, I do want a committee, I mean, not committee, I do want residents. That's, that's where I think uh, the need is to educate and uh, get their uh, tough questions. That's the key. So thank you. Am I, for clarity, um, there isn't, this is open to anyone. They don't have to be a CPA or a, uh, it's just interested in yes. learning and voicing um, their concerns, their or, concerns or their support. Correct. Okay, thank you. Is that the complete treasurer's report then? Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else you, before I next, move on? Next month, five-year forecast, so there'll be some tweaking going on. We are, uh, in some categories, we're beating budget, in some categories, uh, we're not. But overall, we're still on track, and that's the key. Uh, but next month, and, you know, the five-year forecast is always a report that gives treasurers a lot of you know, angst, uh, because there's always something going on. Thank and we you. know with the five-year forecast next month, uh, depending what happens on May 2nd. Correct. Thank you, and thank you for initiating this process to uh, establish a committee. Awesome. All right, you're welcome. All right. 
Central Office Report. Here. I don't know with whom we're starting. Uh, but. I, I will just take a quick moment um, to um, pass along my thanks to the Transportation Committee and uh, the members that are here, as well as everybody else. I, I know it couldn't have been easy sitting and listening to me talk in a room for that long, so I, I appreciate everything and appreciate all the good discussion that was had and the, the feedback that we did learn about the um, wants and needs and uh, of the community really? and, and how we can best serve our students there. Um, for the board, um, before you leave tonight, I will give you a copy of a statement that we prepared in uh, um, anticipation that we will get out to the public tomorrow announcing the, this move there. And thank you. <laughs> Um, thank you to the board who participated in the Ohio Military Family Spirit Week, which is what we're doing right now, which is why we're wearing red, white, and blue. Um, we are, this participation started on Monday. On Monday, it was your favorite military branch to support them. Today, it's red, white, and blue day. Tomorrow, it is statewide purple up day. So if you have your purple, wear your purple. Um, Thursday is called Digi Day or Camouflage Day. And then Friday is Red Day, which stands for Remember Everyone Deployed. Um, this is important to us right now in Springfield because we were fortunate to just receive an announcement from the governor and from ODE. Um, the Ohio Department of Education announced 165 Ohio schools to receive the Purple Star designation as members of the Purple Star class of 2023. Purple Star Schools show a significant commitment to serving students and families connected to our nation's armed forces. 88 Ohio schools received the esteemed award for the very first time, while 77 earned a renewal after three years as a dedicated Purple Star School. Ohio is home to only 511 active Purple Star Schools that dedicate time and supports to students in military families. All awardees meet the unique wellness academic needs of Ohio's military-connected youth. To qualify, schools choose a school-based staff person to serve as a liaison between military families and the school. These liaisons complete professional development, identify military-connected students, and facilitate school and community supports for identified students and their families. Purple Star schools also participate in at least one supportive activity each year. The Purple Star class of 2023 includes schools that host monthly military kids clubs, professional learning for all educators on unique considerations for serving military connected students, and statewide celebrations honoring military students and families like we're doing right now. A Purple Star school receives the designation for three years, after which they have to reapply for renewal by doing the activities throughout the three year process. The announcement of the Purple Star Class of 2023 is part of Ohio's participation in the national celebration of Month of the Military Child, which is April. <clears throat> Congratulations to Shrop Intermediate School, as it is now named a Purple Star Designation School from the Ohio Department of Education. This adds on to our high school, which also has that designation. So congratulations to both schools. That's awesome. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> And Mary, I'm going to assume you're a liaison. I am. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks. So ironically, since the EL tutor came up today as part of our service agreement with the ESC, I was planning to talk about our EL services. So this is a growing population in our community. We have a lot of students that come to us as English language learners, or ELL, as the acronym for education is. Um, these students are sometimes students that cannot communicate fluently or learn effectively in English. And they often come from non-English speaking homes and backgrounds. Um, they're identified at the beginning of the school year based on a screener that's required during the registration process. Those parents will check if English is their language in their home. Um, and then if they check that another language is spoken in the home, then that prompts us to complete a an assessment that has to be done every year. <clears throat> and then the students are assessed yearly through a state assessment called the OELPA, the Ohio English Language Proficiency Assessment. So our tutor works with our EL students across the whole district. Her name is Mrs. Tipton. She has worked really hard the last two years to build good relationships with the families of these students because 
Often these students have other obligations and school doesn't always become their first priority because they help to help with childcare or they have to go out into the workforce. But she makes it a priority to touch base with those families and to keep their kids engaged in our schools. And it's been really successful and every year we get a few more kids. So it's important that we have her available to help those students each day. Do you know how many kids we have? I don't have an exact number today. They sort of, we've had some come and go recently. I think we just had two students withdraw, but I think at the beginning of the school year, we were sitting about 15 across the district, so. That's a lot. Does she rotate among schools? She does. She traveled, she, her home base is at the high school building, but she will go to Spring Hill and Shrop to work with the students on a scheduled basis. Thank you. And she does do an amazing job. Yeah, she's great with them. And you know, and it's not just kids who, who um, you know, that you could tell that they don't speak English. There's, there's a lot of kids out there that speak fluent English, but the understanding of English, like we had one child, when somebody says, I'm gonna make a frozen pizza, and his comment was, why would you eat a pizza frozen? <laughs> Not understanding the yeah. innuendos of what yeah. that means, so she also helps a lot with that. So that's, that's, that's a lot, so thank you. Um, for mine, well, we talked a lot about it, and other things, so um, we do have 32 days left of school. <laughs> Not that, the only reason why I know that is people tell me that all the time, so <laughs> that's, uh, that's exciting. Um, I am very proud of our seventh and eighth graders. Um, I've heard nothing but positives and how polite they were, and it was one of the best groups that they've ever taken, and it was very hot, and I think the day that they did the most walking, uh, when I was talking with Mr. Lovell, he says, he looked back on the bus and they're all just, just totally <laughs> sleeping out until they got to the until they got to the medieval day. So that was that was fun. Um, last Wednesday, you know, one of our goals is to start to do more community events and getting the community into our schools. And one of um, something is called Parent University that is happening at Shrop. Um, it's um, it's in, it's uh, a partnership with um, Summit County Alcohol Drug Addiction and Mental Health, the uh, Summit County ADM. Uh, Red Oak Counseling, um, um, Mr. Germanovich and, and Mrs. Franks for organizing this. And what it is is uh, they come in and each month they're going to do a topic to help parents understand. This last one was uh, um, on vaping and e-cigarettes and the, and the dangers for it. They're debating on what they want to do next month. They've got like, we've got one more month and they've got like, like three different ideas. So they're going to narrow it down. Um, it, we will promote it, we will advertise it, so uh, Shrop parents, right now it's just at Shrop bringing in those families, and our parent group uh, provided pizza pop for the pizza and drinks, so, uh, you know, getting, getting the community into our schools. Um, another thing that we are going to be doing to get our schools is Thursday on the 20th, we are doing a kindergarten roundup, and We've never really done this before, but we want to get our upcoming kindergartners into our schools. So this is going to be a chance for them to uh, meet the Spring Hill staff. They're going to be able to get supplies and resources, uh, things that they're going to need to get ready for, for kindergarten. We're going to work on this, so you guys are coming in with this. Uh, we're going to have the bus there so they can see what a bus is and how that big yellow thing that drives down. They're like, oh, I get to go on that. Uh, there's going to be face painting, there's going to be um, uh, spark, Sparty, the Spartan mask, I could, couldn't read that, no, that's okay. Um, there's going to be popcorn and um, snacks courtesy of the parent group. Uh, we're going to have um, computers signed up for people who might not have internet access at all so they can start registering for kindergarten. We're going to have the library there, we're going to have our resource officer there, uh, they're going to talk about safety town, so it's just going to be a group just to come on in and see our school. And that's gonna be Thursday from five to 6.30. So this is gonna be our first annual kindergarten roundup. So we're, we're excited for that, thank you. Um, another thing, um, so this Sunday in the leader, you saw our Spartan Telegram. And at the bottom of our Spartan Telegram, there was something about our electronic newsletter. We are going to start doing an electronic newsletter <laughs> monthly. And it's going to automatically go to staff and to um, parents. But 
anybody in the community can sign up for the monthly newsletter. There was a um, QR code at the bottom of the Spartan Telegram, and then in our um, in our website on top, there's a link. So anybody in the community, please sign up. You'll get to see what's going on monthly in our schools to get that out there to see. And any announcements that we want to make will be in that. And today, I just got a um, email. We got the Purple Star email, but I also got another email that Andrea Novicki was nominated for Ohio Teacher of the Year. Awesome. Yes. So um, it's a long process to get through, so I will keep you updated on that, but we are very proud of her. Uh, she was nominated, I do believe, Mrs. Warner nominated her, and she was chosen to be a, a, a nomination for, for Ohio teacher. And that, that's a great, great, great honor. So uh, even being nominated is just a huge honor for that. So uh, she'll get a certificate and on that, and we'll help her through the process. and. See where we go with that. So, a lot of you know what? This was a good week. A lot of good things happened in this week. So, I'm very proud of. Um, I'm very proud of where we're at, and where we're going. And I'm just proud of my team, the staff, the students. It, it's a great place, and people don't realize what a great place. This is a hidden gem. I heard you were a chemistry student on Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw pictures. Did you of see that? that? Oh, through the chem day. Okay, so this was this another. Okay, um, another activity that you know I, I love the fact that um, you know through Mrs. Warner's um, tutelage, that teachers are taking chances and they're, and they're and they're going outside their comfort areas and and they're trying things. You know, one of the things that um, I like to emphasize: is let's take risks. Let let's you know what? Let's think outside the box. If it doesn't work, we say oops and we move on. So, uh, Mr. Fleming took his seventh grade class to Mrs. Hannah's class, and they did uh, um, labs. And I mean, there was an acid and fire involved. So just, just so you know, I mean, it was not a, uh, like a, a let's, uh, you know. A volcano with it. Yeah, I mean, I mean they're going, we're gonna go put acid in this. Like, what kind of acid are we playing with here? But uh, um, they, did two ex they did two experiments. One was looking at pennies with just copper and pennies with copper and zinc, and the kids filed it, and they threw it in some acid, and then whatever happened with the pennies, and the, I, I don't know. I <laughs> but one of them got real soft and, 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 and like, you like paper. <laughs> and the other one still stayed hard. And then the other one, which I thought was really cool too, was um, when you take different uh, chemicals and you put them over fire, the flame changes color. That's true. Yes, I mean so it's I mean so there was red flame and blue flame and purple flame and, and orange flame and and if you could have seen the interaction between the upperclassmen and the seventh graders working together, it, every child was engaged, every child was was uh, um, following the directions, and I think they walked away with something, and it was it worked out really well because it was during the um, Washington D.C. trip, so the groups were smaller because they were, and they're like this is going to be something that they're going to do every year. So thank you for you know, letting them think outside the box and, and do that. And thank you to Mr. Fleming and Mrs. Hanna for, for taking those chances. And, and you saw the pictures, and they were, they were pretty cool. And they also had their safety gear on, too. Oh, and, well, I'll tell you, Mrs. Hanna was very, when she was on the front, you put, you put your hair back, take out the gum, take off any jewelry, put your glasses on. I mean, it was, it was done. And the 11th, in the upper class, they were 11th graders. Yes. The 11th graders were, um, we're very making sure that the kid, that the seventh graders were following the rules. But the seventh graders got their hands this right This is in. something that came out of PLC time. That's awesome. So those teachers are working together by department every Tuesday. Um, they can collaborate with each other. They're working together to come up with an and, and that's you know, and that's what we want. We want the learning to be authentic. We want it to be real. We want it to be hands on. And when we talk about our portrait of a Springfield journey of a Springfield Spartan, this this embodied everything of that: the collaboration, the communication, the uh, adaptability. So it was it just emphasized everything. So thank you, thank you for bringing it up. This is one of the benefits that we have having that one building. Yeah. Of you know five different grades and stuff. We need like. And, and, you know, Instead of taking a field trip and everything, just walk down the hall. And that's it. And you know what? And hopefully other teachers will see more of this and they will start to interact and, and, and start bringing this together. So thank you. And your PLC time, again, great job with that, getting the teachers to collaborate and talk. So thank you. I'm done.
You did? I'm done. <laughs> that was good, though, if I could listen to that. <laughs> okay, items worthy of your note. On April 20th, the kindergarten uh, roundup, as has been announced, from 5 to 6.30 at Spring Hill Elementary. May 16th, the next regular Board of Education meeting at 6 o'clock here in the Administration Center. Uh, on May 29th is Memorial Day, no school. June 2nd, student's last day. Yeah. How's, uh, I remember that. <laughs> um, on June 2nd, that's the end of fourth quarter, uh, second semester. And June 2nd also is graduation at E.J. Thomas Performing Arts Center. Any other announcements for? So I'm, I'm getting a list from all the schools of all their uh, last day activities. I had them email it to me. So I'm going to compile a list and send it out. So if there's anything that uh, um, you know that you might okay. want to go visit or see, it'll be there. Thank okay. you. All right. Citizens' comments. Uh, participation is limited to five minutes of duration. But are there any citizens who have comments? Okay, then um, with seeing no comment, uh, citizens' um, comments, then it is recommended that the meeting be adjourned at this time. So moved. Second. Moved and second that we vote on adjournment. Mr. Adams. Ms. Terry. Yes. Mr. Petrie. Yes. Mrs. Brola. Yes. Mr. Hofer. Yes. Mr. Ray. Yes. The meeting adjourned. Good Mrs. Warner.